and good to have you there in your homes. After church today, you're invited to the potluck and the congregational meeting. Church is in a time of change, and you'll get some updates of what's going to be happening, or um, I don't know what they're going to talk about. I should stop talking about what I don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> which I wouldn't say anything then. I will share with you that I drove to the wrong church this morning, so we'll see where that ends up. <laughs> Sitting in the parking lot of the congregation going, something isn't right. Oh, so I'm here, and we're going to talk about the joy of being here. <laughs> Good to be here, to be present with you, and continue to learn and unlearn the lessons that God has for us so that we may hmm, be a presence in this world, bringing that light and love to all we meet. Uh, they had great announcements on the screen, also the prayer concerns to bring this home. Set it by your bed or wherever you like to sit in prayer and remember the names that are listed here. Are there any other announcements from you that have gathered? All right. Well, then we'll begin with the gathering song uh, from the band Amazing Grace. The sun forbear to shine, but God who called me here below will be forever mine, will be
grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's all stand together for the Kyrie this morning. And you all know it, so let's sing out really loud, huh? Peace in the world, for the health of the church, for the unity of all. For this holy house, for all who worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. response to the hungry and the poor that we may live out truth and justice and grace let us pray to the lord let us pray to the lord in our homes, for friends and family, for life and for love, for our work and our play, let us pray to the Lord, let us pray to the Lord, on our world and on our way, center our lives in the water and the word that you nourish our souls with your body and blood let us pray to the lord let us pray to the lord on our world and on our way Please join me in the prayer of the day. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that we may live in love and in beauty and him, and have strength in each other's spirit. You may be seated for the reading. Our reading this morning is from Ephesians chapter 4, going into Ephesians chapter 5. You'll find that in the Pew Bible on page 951. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, rather let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk, <coughs> let no evil talk come out of your mouths but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God 
with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice and be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love. As Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Word of God, word of life. Cause you are strong, you are sure, you are life, you endure, you are good, always true, you are life, breaking through. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my Cause I am found, I am yours, I am loved, I'm made pure, I have life, I can breathe, I am healed, I am free. Here's my Speak what is true. Speak what is true.
Gospel according to John, chapter 6. And found on page 868. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, who father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of Christ. Christ. We'll have the children's message now with Jesse. Jesse, come. Jesse. What church is this? coffee this morning. I don't know what's going on. Hello, hello. Oh, we want to make sure we share pillows. Do we want to make sure everyone has a pillow? Yeah, you can go ahead and sit down. Awesome. So, I have something fun today. Um, I started making a tower out of these Legos that we have. And I was curious if we could play a game. Can we play a game? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, so this is what I like to call my kindness tower, okay? So I have all these pieces right here. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to say something nice about the person who's sitting right next to me. And then I get to add a piece to the tower and not break it, hopefully. And then I'm going to hand it over to you. And then you're going to say something nice about the person next to you. And then we're going to keep going in a circle, just like that. Does that make sense? You get to put them on. Yes. Okay. So, I love your dress. (laughs) Yeah, it's almost your turn. Would you like to say something nice about your sister? There you go. What's something nice about your sister you can say? Whatever you'd like. That you like her necklace. Ah, that's great. We can add a piece. You can add it wherever you'd like. I know it's a hard decision. Oh, we won't break the tower, I promise. All right, your turn, my dear. Awesome. Yes. And would you like to say something nice? Yes, she's got fun too, too. Go ahead, you can add a piece. Wherever you'd like. Wherever you'd like. Right there. (gasps) Nice. This is kind of fun, isn't it? A dolphin, if you want to say something nice about somebody. It is a fish. Do you want to say something nice about somebody to add the fish to our tower? You want to say something nice first. You want to say something nice about your mom or your grandma or your grandpa? Your dad? Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, so, I'm sorry, what? I do miss my dad sometimes, but he doesn't live too far away. Nice. Well, see, this we could, we could keep going forever, right? I have so many pieces right here, and we've got so many Legos everywhere. We could totally keep doing this forever. That's okay. Here we go. Absolutely we can. We can build more of the tower in just a little bit. Does that sound good? Nice. Very exciting. 
Yes, we do have Legos. Here, I'll put this right up here so that everybody can see it. <laughs> right? This got really big. Yeah. And so we can add to it in just a little bit, okay? Sound good? All right. And so this, is, this was super easy to do, right? It's pretty easy to say nice things about people, right? Is it easy? Can it sometimes be hard to say nice things about people? Can it sometimes be a little tricky? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it can. <laughs> yeah. Well, so Jesus is actually super duper good. Perfect. I love it. So Jesus can be super duper good at talking to, be, to people in a really, really nice way. And so in our one of our um, Bible texts today, it was said that we should let no evil talk come out of our mouths, but we should only do what is good for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. So the Bible was telling us that we should use our words so that we build people up, just like we built our tower here today, and that we'll continue building our towers for the rest of the day, I think. <laughs> Or maybe I shouldn't have so many Legos sitting up here. <laughs> and so I want you guys to remember, every time you're playing with some blocks, right, or Legos or whatever you'd like, we've got so many Legos sitting over there too. Whenever you guys are playing with some blocks, you guys can remember that we can build people up with our words instead of being mean and tearing people down, right? Does that make sense? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's join in prayer. Ready? Joining our prayers, we're going to fold our hands, we're going to bow our heads. <gasps> yes. So dear God, thank you so much for being our example. Thank you for showing us how to love and for showing your love to us. Be with us when we try to build these towers of kindness with our friends, our neighbors, and our family members. Amen. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, God. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yes, we'll see you all later, okay? Have a nice day. I'm not starting till this is over. <laughs> My sermon's not that long. It'll be one fourth done already. It's rather uh, funny. I have a Lego story in here, so that worked out well, didn't it? May the words of my mouth and the medita meditations of our hearts continue to help us grow and learn and share and be on this path of uh, grace and love. Amen. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Throughout the Bible, there are many stories of ascending and descending. From Genesis, Jacob dreamed that there was a ladder resting on earth and reaching up into heaven, and he saw angels of God going up and down the ladder. The prophet Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. In the Gospel of John, chapter 1, Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will see the sky opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. On the Mount of Olives, Jesus was taken up and the cloud received him out of their sight. And today we heard Jesus say, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. At the time of Jesus, there was the common belief that God's residence was up here and we are down here. Since we now know more about the form world, we can understand the ascending and the descending in a new way. Rather than directional, up and down, north and south, we can think of it as a movement of our lives. The movement that gathers the living bread of heaven 
the spaciousness of love, and the movement that releases the staleness of not enough, the limits of fear. Rather than heaven being up there, it is an experience here, in the present. And we are all invited on this divine round trip of ascending and descending. In today's gospel, we meet a group that has chosen to stay put, to live in the staleness of fear and say no to this divine round trip. They say no by complaining. Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he say, I have come down from heaven? Though ascending and descending is part of the Bible, complaining is also part of the Bible. From the book of Exodus, the whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron because in the wilderness they were thirsty and tired of this manna from heaven. What shall we eat and what shall we drink? Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock? I looked up the word complaining. In the Greek it translates an element of discouragement with a note of disgust. An element of discouragement with a note of disgust. And it's contagious. Complaints do not stay in our thoughts or our words. When they are shared, they generate more complaints. Sometimes listen to conversations, preferably with family where we're the most honest with one another. Complaints generate complaints. It says the whole congregation of the Israelites complained. Ick, what a tough crowd. When we complain, we close our minds to the possibility of movement. We turn in our divine round trick of, ticket of gathering and releasing for the complaint department. And there we sit in a very small room with no windows. We need reminders. That's why we gather together. We need reminders that there is living bread in the here and now. And we need, we need the reminder from verse 45. They shall all be taught by God. We need reminders that the teacher, teachers are present here and now. We need to remind ourselves that our purpose is to practice the movement of gathering love and releasing the fear. And through that practice, others are immersed around us in this spaciousness of heavenly love and released from those stale old stories of fear. They are released from the complaint department. When working on sermons, it's quite a delight to see what is brought to me. It makes me smile. It reminds me that we are not alone on this journey of learning and unlearning. So for this sermon, two stories of this divine round trip came to mind. Beautiful stories that I hadn't thought about for years. One story is about my dad, and one is about a seven-year-old boy. First, my dad's story. Steve and I needed a new water softener. And my dad knew a guy. My dad always knew a guy. The guy descended the basement stairs and installed the new water softener. My dad and I were there when the water was turned back on and water began to drip from the basement ceiling. The guy turned off the water and explained sometimes when working on older homes, when a water softener is installed, it loosens the pipes just enough that a fitting might need to be adjusted. And the only way to find the leak was to start cutting into the ceiling. About six foot feet in, the loose fitting was discovered and fit. The guy turned the water back on, no leak. With a tired face, the guy said he would come back tomorrow and patch and paint the ceiling. Without skipping a beat, my dad said, Steve and I know how to patch and paint. No need to come back. 
the guy's face softened and I witnessed him ascending the heavenly basement staircase on his way to the next job. It was beautiful. The second story is about a seven-year-old boy. It took place at the church. I was in the sanctuary preparing for worship when the seven-year-old boy descends the center aisle, his head hung low. We greeted one another, and he handed me a red Lego bike. We had given our sons Lego toys to the church for the kids to use. This boy had fallen in love with the red Lego bike and took it home. His mother found out and told him, you must return this to Pastor Sherry. Head still hung low, he placed the bike in my hand and said, I took it. I responded, that must have been tough to walk down the aisle and return this bike. The young boy nodded. Then I said, it was a very, very brave thing to do. Now the other children can also play with this bike. His face lit up. He smiled. He turned on his heels and skipped out of the church. He skipped out of the church. I witnessed the lightness of an angel ascending home. Stories like this happen all the time. The gathering and the releasing, the softener guy gathering up the grace that my mother, my father shared, and the little boy releasing the guilt. We go on this divine round trip every moment of every day, and what a gift for all. The angel wings that we share with the neighbor, we share with ourselves. It's this beautiful back and forth, up and down movement of life. And the descending and descending, one is not bad and one is not good. Sometimes we get the image, going up is good, going down is bad. No, no, they're both. They both help us get to the depth of who we are. They both help us learn and unlearn. And we are able to go beyond the limitations of this form. And we're able to go beyond the temptation to complain about the world around us. We descend to the depth of who we are, to that place where that living bread has taken up residence today, tomorrow, and into eternity. And we're given the strength. We are brave to release the old stories the lies that we are guilty, that we are unworthy, that we don't belong. We spread our wings and share the grace with all we meet. We spread our wings and share the grace with ourselves. We move in love. So welcome this morning. Welcome to your divine round trip. Coffee and snack will be served in 15 minutes. Amen, amen.
please join me for the Apostles Creed and since you all have it to memory speak loudly here we are didn't want to start without you I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ God's only son the prayers of the church, your response will be, receive our prayer. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Reignite the prayer of the church. By your spirit, root your church around the globe in prayer and spiritual practices. Merciful God, We rely on the goodness of your creation in everything we do. We pray for trees that offer shade and for our fellow creatures that depend on the trees for shelter and food. Sustain the work of all who advocate for forest and wilderness areas. Merciful God, guide our leaders and nations with the spirit of justice and mercy. Let no evil come out of our mouths, but rather let us extend grace. We pray for our enemies, at least those we have named as enemies. Merciful God. Sustain feeding ministries and organizations such as the ELCA World Hunger and our local food pantries. We work and pray for a day when hunger is no more. Merciful God. We pray for this congregation and all who are gathered be present among anyone who cannot be with us today. Be with all who are hurting, grieving, or ill. Merciful God, we pause for you to offer any names either out loud or silently within their hearts. We remember the saints who have gone before us in faith, trusting in the promise of the resurrection. We find hope in your communion of saints of all times and all places. Merciful God, we lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Thank you. Take this moment to share peace with one another. Whether the peace sign, the little bow, shaking of hands, hug. Now have morning offering.
Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's have everybody stand up and you can go ahead and sing with us. Afterwards, let's have a seat and we'll have our congregational meeting.
Go in peace, you are the body of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. All right, and on that note, let's go ahead and just start our meeting now.